from grouping number two, Dr. Stefan Schutt from Victoria University. His title is Keepers of Ghosts, a community research project about new technologies and old signs. When you're ready. In early 2012, I found the records of a sign writing company in a demolition site in Inner Melbourne. This company called Lewis and Skinner painted signs from the early 1900s on billboards, milk bars, railway hoardings and shops around Melbourne and Victoria. I then turned 10,000 of these documents into an open online archive, which is up there now. And as part of the process of doing that, I started to become really interested in the remains of the signs themselves around the city. This one here is a Bushels Tea sign. It's, uh, it's on, the, uh, on the wall of an old shop in Coburg, when, opposite where my kids go to school. Now, it's actually more than one sign. There are a number of signs painted on top of each other, painted over quite a few decades. And it's a real sort of symbol of the kind of uh, meaning of a place where people used to gather in, 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 in previous years. When I went by that site earlier this year, the shop and the sign had been demolished to make way for units. And I felt a real sense of bereavement, like I'd lost an old friend. Uh, and I'd lost a kind of a pointer to the way that community used to be. And I started to wonder whether there were other people who felt the same way as me. Most of us these days live in cities like the city we're in, Melbourne. Cities are restless places where, where things tend to change all the time. However, if you drive three hours north of Melbourne to, to the Barmer Lake system near Shepparton, this tree has been sitting there for over a thousand years. And the local indigenous people there, the Yorta Yorta, have been eating their mussels under that tree for 1,000 years or more. So there's quite a different kind of experience in that. The, um, the academic Marshall Berman um, said that um, modern life promises a lot, but it also threatens to destroy everything we are, everything we know, and everything we have. Now, related to that, in my investigation, is the way people use technology in cities. And particularly, what I found with the old signs is there are thousands of people around the world taking photographs of old signs, uh, uploading them and sharing them with other people. Something is going on there. And for me, that created a research question that I wanted to answer with the project, which is, in what ways can am amateur historical and digital practices work together to connect people to local urban communities? So there's our project. Three stages. The first one was a review where we reviewed particularly amateur online archival practices around the world. The second one is we did an online survey with ghost sign practitioners around the world as well, particularly those who, who were very well known, like, like Frank Jump in New York. And the third thing we did was run an intervention, a community exhibition in the inner city suburb of Yarraville. We ran over five days. Uh, um, this exhibition upstairs at a cafe with all the painted material that I found in that, in that demolition site. And we also painted the logo of the sign writing company on the wall of the cafe over five days. And you'll notice the logo has a little picture of a guy painting a sign. Um, and the guy who actually painted the sign ended up being joined by a lot of other sign writers who were wanting to get back into learning their skills. And that thing became a community event in itself. Um, the thing that we did at the, at the exhibition is also interview around 50 of the people who came to the exhibition. Now, we, we had something like 218 people who we counted as coming to that exhibition over, over five days. But there were many more in the evenings when we weren't there. So it was quite a big event and, and quite successful. We also uh, generated a fair bit of media from that as well. Uh, we had stories in the Channel 10 News. You can see the reporter there. Um, the Age newspaper. There was, um, uh, there was uh, two interviews on ABC Radio, the local papers, blogs, etc., etc. So there was a lot of interest, and a lot of interest from a lot of different kinds of people in, in, in this project. We're currently looking through that data uh, to, to really work out what's going on with that interest in old signs and how it connects to people's sense of belonging and identity. But the things that are emerging that we've found so far is that for, lo for people, local history matters. It's important to them. It connects them to the places where, where they live. The second thing is... People use this interest in old signs as a lens to, um, to look at the world around them in a new way and to appreciate it in a new way, but also as a window to understand the way that that, that place over time used to be, the kinds of communities that used to be there and the people that lived there. Uh, another thing we notice is that there's a real rise in amateur archival uh, um, um, activities, especially on the web. Uh, that technology for people is liberating through the use of mobile phones and social, social media, but it's also problematic in the way it fragments people's sense of belonging. 
The, the second to last thing is that there are a number of communities who are doing this kind of activity and who are interested in this stuff. And I've run out of time, so I can't go through them. And the last thing is that sense of loss seems to be common for everybody, and it wasn't just me. Thank you.